23 of Be Cool with our special guest, Foxy, aka Sarah, but I'm going to call her Foxy because I like that. Anyways, so let me actually get a better angle of everything. All right, so everyone on Ustream can definitely see us. Now let's get Periscope on and rolling. And of course, Periscope can never share on Twitter, but that's their dilemma, not mine. All right, and then Periscope can see us there. So hey everyone on Periscope, and hey guys on Ustream. Welcome to episode 23 of Be Cool, and let's give it a round of applause to our special guest, Foxy. Yay! Thanks, Foxy, seriously, for being and participating on this show. So I kind of gave you a little quick rough draft of what this is going to entail, but for anyone that's new on Be Cool, I'm going to give you kind of also a background on what is to be expected. So Foxy, this is your episode, so be yourself. I'm going to just talk all about you and only you. Sounds good. Um, I like the vibe of everything to be more of a conversation between you and I instead of me asking you 21 questions and then you <laughs> give me 21 answers. So as much as a conversation can happen, so if you have a question for me, feel free to ask. Um, but I and everyone else should already have some type of questions that we want to ask you. If at any moment you feel uncomfortable by a question by either me or one of the fans online, you can feel free to not respond or whatever. Um, I'm trying to think. There's no nudity, but we've got, you know, we you know that's covered. Also, one thing that I actually do with my special guests that I can actually touch is, you see this, but that's not the fun part. Well, that's the fun part. But in this special little bowl, there's a mystery meal that we will both taste. And I'm hoping oh, yeah. you've never tried it before. I for sure haven't tried it. So I'm kind of actually a little nervous for this one. I feel like it might be easy, but overall, I'm kind of a little, <laughs> I'm very scared about this. All right. So worst case, if we don't like it, this bowl is for backup to throw it up. And then we have oh, uh, <laughs> little strawberry ca candies that normally your grandma always has in a magic bowl. So mm -hmm. we'll have this as backup to get the... You know, that or lemon heads, one of the two. Two, yep, exactly. All right, Sarah, <laughs> aka Foxy. Ah, okay, now I'm going to get my man fixed. So... What exactly do you do for a living? For a living? Yes. Mostly I do modeling at art schools. At art schools. So is it usually just in the Detroit area with the art schools, or do you go all around Michigan or even other states? It's usually within about an hour of Detroit, mm -hmm. but mostly it's in Detroit or in Oakland County. So what or we, Macomb County. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Detroit County area. No, no, no. I definitely. Um, what exactly made you start with figure modeling? Uh... Let's see. I either started way back when I was like two and never got used to clothes, and I was just a born nudist. So this, when I was, I would streak around like the airport in my underwear because yeah. I was two. So you can't yell at somebody for that. But no, you eventually, can't. when you get old enough, people start yelling at you for it. <laughs> so some people start yelling at you for it, like family. Yeah, and, you know. <laughs> conservatives that can't handle the, the truth of Pretty your own much. body. Exactly. So there was that, but then also, you know, going through middle school and high school, I wanted to go to CCS as an art school mm -hmm. for college, and no way in the world I was going to afford it without putting myself in you know, tremendous debt. So I got a job there instead as a figure model. Yeah, and so I've talked to a lot, a number amount of models that do nude work, and they've always told me that their story began when they were, you know, very young and they were just free with their body mm -hmm. and, like, just exactly like you, running around airports yeah, butt much. naked. <laughs> and it's interesting. Do you think that there was just, like, was it something about clothes that just felt restricting to you or, like, it just itched or something like that? Like, what made you possibly feel that, clo you know, you'd rather be naked than be with clothes? Because clothes were, um, complicated. Yeah? They were complicated. Because you had to have... The, the shirt that matched the, the bottoms and the shoes that match everything else. And yeah. if I'm not wearing anything at all, it all matches. <laughs> and nobody can yell at me for wearing the wrong things. That's hoping that you got an, <laughs> uh, an even oh. tan. <laughs> so, uh, definitely had days that are not so even. But. So you mentioned that if you could afford to go mm. to school, you would have went to CCS. You know, what would you have went to school for? Like, what would, would have been your degree if you went to CCS? Uh, I would have loved to do either, like, a sculpture or possibly... Hold um, on. <laughs> For whatever reason, they cannot... Uh, 
There you go. I feel like y'all should be able to hear it. I can't see how Ustream is not hearing it. Kyle or JR, please mention if you can hear us on Ustream. Periscope, y'all should be perfectly fine. I can't imagine y'all can't hear us. Um, until Still says they can't hear us. What? That is so weird. All right. Sorry, Sarah, and everyone on Periscope. Periscope, of course, y'all can. Y'all sound fine. You have to be on Ustream. All right, give me a second. We're gonna. All right, they can hear us. Finally, awesome. That like was five minutes of like a total meltdown. Uh, All right, back to what I was asking, which was, oh yeah. So what degree? Y'all missed the beginning part. Sorry, Ustream. <laughs> y'all just not getting that back up. Um, but with the last question, you mentioned that you, if you had the extra funds and, mm -hmm. and you could afford it, you would go to school at CCS, which is College for Creative Studies here in Detroit. It's an art school. So what degree... It's a very expensive art school. <laughs> I, I, I'm not sure exactly the cost, but I definitely Francis knows the cost. So what degree would you have gotten from if you went to that art school? Uh, either would have been with a, a sculpture type degree mm -hmm. or illustration, because I oh, love really? all of their illustration. Degree. Yeah. So... Okay, well, let's talk about illustration first, because that's one that I'm more fam familiar with. So, you know Francis. If y'all don't know Francis, he is my boyfriend, and he's an illustrator, and he's actually one of the full-time professors that works at CCS for the illustration department. So, seeing that you are now doing the figure modeling for CCS, especially with Francis and then our friend Andy and probably other instructors... Is it kind of more like a cheat sheet where you can like secretly get paid to learn from oh, what yeah. they and are teaching? They don't teaching? get graded either, so it that's works out true, right? Well. So have you ever actually like showed Francis any of your sketches or anything? Um, not Francis, but I've I've gone to the Saturday sessions occasionally yeah. where they have the live drawing. I can go in there and you know because you got the pass too. Or whatever, so so you can get away with anything that you want. Mm -hmm. and just show them the pass. Hey, I'm technically a work here. I can get whatever. Yeah. I want this for that. student faculty alumni yeah. whatever to go into the. Clinics. So that actually on, in the long run worked out for you perfectly. Uh -huh. You didn't have to pay the shit ton of fees that they exactly. throw at you. And I get to work with a lot of different teachers that all have a different technique for drawing the human form and whatnot. And their own little side tricks and whatnot. So it works out really well. So do you only benefit from CCS? Because you also mentioned that you you know, you know do figure modeling for other art schools. I, I get to take it from everywhere. I, I do some that are art centers for a lot more you know, of an older generation mm -hmm. where it's mostly retired people yeah. or people that are you know, just around their profession. They do the the figure work to you know, de-stress and whatnot. So, so it's not so much young students. Yeah, learning. it's more, it's more, because I'm from, or not from, but I lived in Sarasota, Florida for mm -hmm. a while. And so the majority <laughs> of the community was seniors. So mm -hmm. they would always have like little art classes going on outside and everything like that. Mm -hmm. So realistically, with your access to all the art schools and everything like that, um, let me actually backtrack since most of the you streamers missed out in the beginning. So you do figure modeling, and your best definition, what exactly is figure modeling? It's basically learning how to draw the human form in its entirety, because there's a, a lot of times they'll break it down into parts, depending on if you're, you know, figure one class or more advanced classes than that. But they'll break it down to do portraits, they'll break it down to do hands and feet, or a lot of the, the parts, and then how to draw it as a whole. Yeah. By the very end of the class, hopefully. So, with that definition of figure modeling, what does you, a model, provide for that type of class? I give them something other than a picture or a sculpture to work from. Mm -hmm. Something that's alive and moving in all the twists and turns and bends that the human body can do that they didn't they, they don't know how to draw yet. Yeah. So with figure modeling, is can you only so say I'm interested in figure modeling. Say I've never done it in my entire life before, which is an actual false. Um, but say I've never done it before. Do I have to do nude figure modeling, or is there other types? There's clothes modeling too for like a fashion classes or just people that want to learn how to draw a clothed figure. Mm -hmm. And so there's costume modeling or clothed modeling and then there's even portrait modeling. That stuff doesn't require any nudity. So with the portrait figure modeling, what exactly, because I can only imagine based on my history with figure modeling, but with portrait, you are only looking at usually the mm -hmm. chest up. So do you have to do a lot of facial expression and holding that for a certain amount of time, or is it not usually? Especially if it's like 
a long pose or a painting or something like that, then I'm not going to expect you to be able to do some kind of crazy expression and hold that for seven hours while they yeah. paint it. <laughs> so they're smiling. Smiling is one of the ones you cannot hold for it's, five it's, seconds. It's a lot of muscles and it hurts your cheeks. Yeah, but it does. If there are some, when it's, they're learning how to draw a portrait, they do have portrait gestures where you will do some interesting expressions or just tilting your head certain ways. They learn how to draw the features in all different perspectives, doing all sorts of things. And so usually with that setup, because you, I, you've done photo shoots. Mm -hmm. So, okay, well, we're gonna, I'm like, I feel like I'm skipping things because last episode I actually went over my versions of what mm -hmm. I thought figure modeling was about. So skipping back and going backwards a little bit, what's your, what would you be your definition between photo shoots and figure modeling as a model? As a model, uh, the figure modeling is more knowing what you can hold for how long. That is true. That is definitely true. Because you have to be still for that amount of time. That is true. And you have to be able to get back into that pose if it's going to be longer than whatever the oh. first break is. Whereas, you know, the, the photo shoots, it's just long enough for that photo or two or three or whatever to get it perfect. But... You get to breast in between, or move, or if something's uncomfortable, it's just a couple seconds, as yeah. opposed to minutes or longer. <laughs> I mean, so, and any pose you do, no matter how comfortable you think it's going to be, after an hour, something hurts somewhere. See, and that's why I always feel like it, because it's, it's been very long time since I did figure modeling. Like, if Francis doesn't have a model, like, if you can't come on a certain day, like, literally Wednesday was a day, nobody can get any models, so I have to fill in for him, but, or fill in for somebody, yeah. but... Realistically, after that point, it's been a long time since I actually figure modeled, so I always forget, you know, of the pain that it comes through. Mm -hmm. um, and so I end up, um, like, always pointing my toes. Oh, yeah. Right when the pose gets in, and then I realize, wait, nope, I gotta put that foot back into a normal standard position. Yeah, that took me a while to like, get out of that habit, because I started with photo shoots yeah. for almost a year before I started at the schools. So what... I mean, other than you kind of technically, quote unquote, using, you know, the school system and trying to like learn, listen to the instructors teach about uh, anatomy and like illustration and such, but what made you go from photo shoots to figure modeling? Well, I, I went, I started with photo shoots. I got into photo shoot modeling from uh, right after I did my senior portraits for high school. Oh, yeah? And then I would just walk around downtown Royal Oak, which is local, not mm -hmm. too far from here. It's a nice really nice community area in downtown area very busy and a lot of young people and a lot of art people a lot of music people it's just the, the general community there and one day when I was walking around in like July or August or something and I'm just walking down the downtown streets minding my own business and there was some guy who asked if he could take a picture of me and I'm like sure why not and I'm just wearing like a t-shirt and I had a bikini top underneath that so we were just walking around the streets, taking pictures against some of the storefronts and whatnot, because mm -hmm. there's some very interesting sites down there. Yeah. And so that's how I got into the modeling, because later on, just just from doing that, got some photos, it was kind of yeah. cool. And then he gave me his information to contact later if I was interested in doing more for money. And it, he was very much, you know, a hobbyist. Didn't really yeah. know what he was doing, but it was fun. Yeah. And that way I got to do what, what, what was my comfort and get used to it at my pace, which that, was really nice. And then from there, cool. I went to seek it out and find the, the more professional photo shoots, the more professional photos and whatnot. But it was it's always been fun. See, and that's kind of similar how I started, too. It literally, the, not the day after, but I did my senior portraits. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I'm like, this is not too bad. And I get always questioned... Oh, what made you start modeling? Like mm -hmm. that's why I like these episodes to be a little different than your standard interviews because they ask always the same stuff. So I try my hardest to go a little bit deeper than mm -hmm. that. But realistically, I mean, it's true. Sometimes you want to know how an individual started something, what they're famous for, what they're good at, and things along those lines. And so I remember when I started, I um, did the senior portraits. Felt like that would be interesting to give a try. Because I've never, you always see, like, you know, the magazines, of course, with models and all that other stuff. And I honestly wanted to know what it took to become a model. So where mm -hmm. you can actually think, hi, my name is so-and-so, I'm a model, kind of introduction. <laughs> which yes. I hate giving, but, like, an introduction mm -hmm. like that. And so that's what started me um, creating that mold and trying to figure it out. But I always try to, you know, inform 
other individuals that are looking to pursue modeling that they should definitely try figure modeling first because I feel like you're more in touch with your body a little bit because uh, you can understand how poses work. Mm -hmm. And it's not a sexualized thing oh, in yeah, the art no. classes, whereas a lot of the photo shoots are very sexualized. They, they definitely can get <laughs> very sexualized. I mean, I've worked with a good amount of photographers mm -hmm. that are very sweet, like the hobbyists oh, and yeah. stuff like that. You'll get a whole handful of those kind of individuals but yeah they definitely like oh stick your ass out and you're mm -hmm. like your tits out and all this other stuff so when you you know you say that figure modeling isn't more sexual or isn't based on you know the sex and all that all that other stuff whatever it's not meant to be sexy yeah exactly um what makes you say that that's the case with figure modeling like, can you give like an example of how your poses are like in figure modeling versus how they would be in actual photo shoots, like if they're both nude? Well, especially for the longer poses, you can't arch your back to stick your bust out and stick your butt out and all that, all that crazy contorting of your spine and your legs. You can't hold that for the amount of time that's required for the, the figure drawing for the classes. And they don't care if you look sexy or not. They're just learning how to draw a body no matter what it's doing. Mm -hmm. So they don't care you know, how pretty you are, how young you are, how much your boobs stick out. They don't care about any of that. <laughs> Actually, a big part of them is learning, teaching the kids how gravity affects the breasts oh, yeah. and how to really draw them as opposed to everything you see and everything you think it should look like. Oh, yeah. The There's worst. a lot of discussion about how to draw them where they actually look and the way they actually move. Yes. And how gravity, and it's, it's not a big ball, it's more like a teardrop, stuff like that. Yeah. that mm -hmm. There's other forces that act on that besides just big, busty, anime-type breasts that they're used to seeing. So, <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's interesting because with figure modeling, at least with my experiences, well, with photo shoots, like just how you mentioned, you know, usually you do have more of the arched back mm -hmm. and you're kind of posing in more like, not prissy, but just more like dainty little poses in this, in, in this. And it's very much posed. It is definitely absolutely. more posed, but then you go into the figure modeling world and a lot of times you're all like, my stomach is like sticking out almost like I'm pregnant oh, yeah. because I'm not, I'm not going to suck in this stomach for, I mean, not, not for an offense. hour yeah, or, for an hour hour or anything. Like, sorry, y'all, y'all just going to get a beer belly if that's going to be the, you know, the time of day that I'm having. But one of the things that I found always... You don't care about, you know, what twists and turns create what oh, wrinkles yeah. and... Bulges. It doesn't bulges. matter. Everyone has wrinkles. Everyone... It's what happens when you have skin. Yes. Yeah. And that's one thing that I also find fascinating, too, is actually with figure modeling, it's... I feel like... It's very taxing on the body in comparison to actually oh, going to photo it's, shoots. It's like isometrics at a gym. Yes. You're holding a pose holding. and you're holding the muscles tense so that you stay in that pose. Oh, yeah, definitely. And it's the fact that it's it's more taxing, but realistically, it's the easiest to get prepared for. All you have oh. to do is just realistic show up. Who cares if you're shaved all over? Who cares oh. if your hair is greasy? If you have, like, no makeup on, they actually prefer no yeah. makeup. So it's the, so they can see the structure of your eyes. Yeah, and exactly. I've, I've had those days where they're like, can you take the makeup off? And I barely wear any, so... <laughs> I was like, yeah, just, just, you know, just shoot to the bathroom and wash my face, no problem. See, and that's why I feel like, the like again, Wednesday when Francis didn't have any figure models mm -hmm. that he could get access to, he literally called me at 9 in the morning, 30 minutes after the class started. Oh, okay. He said, hey, Shima, can you actually come and pose for my figure session? And it was his anatomy class, and so obviously they need to see the naked form, but me being his girlfriend posing for his class, his students... That's not something that we should cross the lines for yeah. me being naked for, which I'm fine posing nude, but not for his students. Yeah. So I ended up having to wear a leotard, but showing up instantly at, you know, getting a call at 9 a.m., I was able to get there at 9.30 in the morning yeah. just because I literally just threw on a leotard real fast and then ran out the house, made sure I had lunch, and then all was mm -hmm. history after that. So it's nice that you're able to come as you are. But you just have to expect that your body is going to uh, be sore after a certain yeah, time. <laughs> now, what's your, um, with all the, you know, different classes that, hi, everyone. <laughs> um, actually, let me just make sure that I'm not missing any certain questions from anyone. So if Periscope, y'all have any questions for Foxy about figure modeling or about modeling or about anything that we've discussed so far, feel free to go now or technically forever hold your peace until I can actually look at the screen. Um, as far as you stream, y'all were joke, you're laughing. Oh, good job, Kyle. So apparently he's, his sound was on mute the entire time. So realistically, <laughs> that part was not my fault. Um, the one asks, how long have you been modeling? I started modeling when I was 19. 
And so, because that's when I did my senior portraits, mm-hmm. and I ended up going to that by myself and just having a fun time without yeah. my family being all crazy around me. So I got to do what my own thing. And, yeah. And that was, that was actually a real good time. I got to wear whatever I wanted. You didn't yeah. have anybody looking on my shoulder telling me what not to do. So yeah. So that was, a, and there ended up being a photographer there that was actually doing some experimental stuff with like shadows and whatnot. Mm-hmm. And it was really fun for me just to be part of that process. So walking out of there and then finding the, the guy in Royal Oak, you know, several weeks later that just wanted to have pictures of me because I was pretty. Yeah. And it was fun. And see, that's so. the nice part about waiting until you're at least, to, you know, until at least you're 18. Because yeah. you don't need your parents to be right <laughs> behind you watching whatever's happening. Because I'm only imagining me shooting nudes or glamorous stuff and my mom being right behind me shooting. That would be just so fucking awkward. I'm just thinking about it now. I don't want to think about it. There's either the awkwardness of them disapproving or even more awkward is if they're trying to push you to be more sexual. Oh my god, that's horrible. I can't even imagine. I know there's parents like that, but oh my god, I cannot imagine my mom being like that. Cause I, I've been in, around those situations myself, not being my parents, but by helping a, another photographer that I worked with for several years mm-hmm. and helping with his shoots. I was good at posing the models because I've always been real natural with my poses. Yeah. That can just fall into something without having a whole lot of guidance. So I, I would go frequently to assist him with his photo shoots, and I, I've been in the situations where the mother is pushing the, oh, the child, no. to, and it was awkward. It was awkward not being the child, oh, so I can only no. imagine how she felt. Oh, that sounds horrible. <laughs> like, it can uh, always get worse. I can only imagine poor things. Um, I, I had a question that kind of related to that, but now I just had a brain fart, and that fucking <laughs> happens. So kind of going more into just you and only you real fast, because we talk, you know, we're talking a lot about modeling and such, but you did come in here, and I warned you, I warn a lot of people that come into this house, that we have, a, you know, a two-year-old wine marina, and she's super sweet and everything, but you literally mentioned that you have three dogs currently in your car. It's cold outside, so nobody get, like, all pissy, because I know some people get pissy about certain things. There's also that. no sun right now. Yeah, there's no sun, it's Have fucking, and one's a husky, so literally that's, like, their temperature range, but... She'd rather be laying in the snow in a Somewhere yeah, so she's actually happy. so she's probably actually just crying right now because there's no snow. But she's she's probably, probably sleeping. Cold. Um, <laughs> but you seem like you were able to mm-hmm. handle Akira fairly well in comparison to a lot of other people that mm-hmm. we've had in this house. And I noticed from my stocking that you actually have your own um, dog sitting type of company. I do. Do you care to explain a little bit in depth about how that actually like started and everything like that? That's another fun story. Yes. Because when I was a child, my mom didn't want us to have a dog. Oh, and I, of course, I wanted a dog. <laughs> and finally, my my whoever it was had talked her into us getting a dog. And my sister wanted a basset hound because her friend had a basset hound. <laughs> <laughs> and there's no training a bass and nope. hound because they're all... It, it, Their noses are always down to the ground at all times. She, she was a garbage hound and apparently chapstick. She loved chapstick. So she, and she knew when you were watching her and when you weren't. And she would literally sneak around so that she didn't make any noise with her claws. And it was ridiculous. But so after her... And then I couldn't even walk her because she was a bass and hound. They don't like going for walks. Yeah. So me and a friend of mine... A childhood friend back in like you know, elementary school days, we would go around knocking on people's doors asking if we can walk their dog for a dollar, and that's how we got ice cream money for the day. See, y'all were smart. I tried <laughs> literally that same, almost like trying to just get money as a kid because I was always scared to ask my mom for money. Oh, yeah. So I. You have to do chores. And you stuff, had to do chores. You know? <laughs> well, I wouldn't do chores, and I would get pissed because I'd hear people like kids always saying, "Oh, I got my allowance for oh, the week," and I'm like, "What the fuck is this allowance thing? I never get allowance." So. Y'all, I'm on that boat, so see, it's all right. But you were smart. You decided to walk other people's dogs. I decided to lug my mom's lawnmower all around the neighborhood with the weed whacker, thinking I can, you know, mow lawns. That was the worst decision of my entire life, almost. Not really, but my little brother tried that. It's not easy as far as if you don't have a car or a truck to yeah. carry all that. And but. definitely when you're in elementary school age, you don't have those things yet. Yeah, and you don't have the muscle to carry something like that or pull something like that. Um, it's one or the other, not so big of a deal, but we sure. got all of that equipment. Yeah, it's, not, it's not fun. Um, but with the dog sitting, so you started, you know, that's kind of how it began. Mm-hmm. Did you keep up with that all the way through grade I school? Have. All the way to now? All the way up until today, I'm still doing it. Yeah? And so, is it... Because, I mean, I have a dog, obviously, we just mm-hmm. mentioned that, but there's moments where I'm home all day, but 
she doesn't get rant enough. Because, okay, if y'all don't know, and if you don't know, a Weimaraner is fucking psychotic dogs that have high <laughs> energy. They're super sweet, loyal, all the fun stuff you can ask for a dog, but, like, insanely energetic to the point I can't even handle it. So we got Akira because mm -hmm. Francis wanted a running dog, a long-distance dog. So How's that working? It's going to be perfectly fun for him. Me, on the other hand, who spends most of the days with her, yeah. it's not... Like, I tried walking her slash running her. I can't. Like, she literally goes ten times faster than I can you imagine. You a session with me, that's See, all. See, and that's the thing. And you saw her when walking in. She's like... We've had training with her and everything, so she knows how to, like, sit, lay oh, down, all that fun stuff, but, like, just fucking psychotic little girl, like, just all over the place. There's days, though, realistically, now she has a schedule, wakes up around 8.30, gets fed, but then around 9 a.m., that's when she mostly just sleeps the entire day, but then at 5 o'clock, that's when she's up and at him all over again and just mm -hmm. wants to play all the way up until, like, 10 o'clock, and I realistically cannot keep up with that girl. And if I'm lucky, Frances might have time to actually run her. Yeah. But it's it's insane. So with you know my history with her and other dogs that have had in my past, how can you manage taking care of not only your own dogs but other people's dogs? Oh, it's a it's it's a lot of time commitment. It yeah. Definitely is the and energy. Like I can't just be lazy all day long. Oh no. When I've got these dogs to take care of, and then not only that, but you have to be the dominant of of the dogs so that they don't try to push you over and get away with shit. So it's it's a lot it's a lot of work and a lot of effort, and you can't ever just have a day off. So is there a max amount of dogs you've seen? Like I've definitely seen photos of you know individual handlers having like a pack of twenty dogs on like a leashes. I haven't gone that far yet. I think my limit so far has been about four or five, and that's usually at least one of those dogs being my own dog okay. who's trained. Yeah, and one of the other ones being another dog that I train personally, which are two of the ones that are in my car right now. So is there with, <laughs> since you've mentioned that you trained you know other people's dogs. Mm -hmm. Getting a person's dog that you haven't trained, so it's exactly like an example, you getting a cure for the yeah. day, how would you technically handle her with, you know, say certain owners don't have the training ability to keep oh, their dog? Those. <laughs> yeah, I can only imagine. I mean, we tried our hardest to realistically just keep her with the basics. Mm -hmm. We definitely fell short on keeping that up. Like, we've had trainers like, oh, you can definitely do, like, the uh, the obstacle training with her. Like, she's that strong. The agility courses. Yeah, the agility courses. That she's that strong. She would do perfect in it. I've actually seen a basset hound do it before, and it was hilarious. Really? I've never that seen That was the funniest thing I've ever seen. I it cannot imagine a basset hound doing um, an agility. That they they had to lower everything. Let's oh, just say that. <laughs> that's so silly. But no, like, ser uh, seriously, though, you know, having a dog that has basically no training behind it and then being able to take care of it for the day or the weekend, mm -hmm. however the owner set it up, how are you, like, are you trying to secretly train them yourself or are you just let them kind of, not free roam, but... I always implement some very basic stuff just because I don't want the dog jumping all over me yeah. and being a crazy wild dog in my care that I can calm the dog down because of I'm a, and I'm an alpha dog just naturally. I'm a dominant, uh, whatever, dominant character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever, whatever the word I'm looking for. Personality. There we go. See, you, what you're just like me. That's I what forget my words a lot. I have a very dominant personality around dogs. Not so much with other people. I don't project that way, but definitely around other dogs. I don't want them jumping all over me, claw clawing my face and all this and going crazy. Yeah. Not a lot of humans want that, but some just can't. Let alone a dog peeing on you or something else. That's also a sign of dominance. So, <laughs> to avoid all of that, I, I come in with the the presence that I do of being, you know, it's body language, it's energy. Yeah. It's being calm. It's waiting until the dog calms down before you give it any kind of attention. And every dog is going to respond to that. Mm -hmm. They're not all going to respond the same way in the same amount of time or whatever because of whatever they're used to, but they will all still react to ju just something that simple of just being a calm presence and being a dominant presence. Yeah, and a lot of people don't understand that. Especially the fact that if they, if they want their dinner and I'm going to make them wait until they sit and they calm down before they get their dinner, they're going to learn really fast that they should calm down. See, and that's... 
Uh, that's what makes me proud as a dog parent right now because Akira will sit and she will mm-hmm. wait for that damn dog food. Like I, my old dog that passed away a long time ago, she would. I had her since I was five, so I never properly got to the chance to train her. But she would literally just seconds just go and devour her food. If you came anywhere near her food, she would just like snarl and everything. Oh, yeah. I so, dealt with that. See, and then knowing that history, I made sure once we got Akira. Okay, I'm going to make her sit and wait until she can, mm-hmm. I say it's okay to eat your food. And then when she started to eat her food, I told Frances, I'm like, we both need to, like, yeah. go and have her hand and grab the food from her and still have that same situation where she still had to sit and wait until mm-hmm. she was properly trained for it. So I'm very glad that I was actually able to yes. manage that because I know and a lot of it really is a simple concept, but it's not one that everybody understands that the dog needs that. Yeah. Exactly. So that they know that you, it's your, whenever you decide to give them the food, even if it's on the floor, it doesn't mean they can have it. Yeah. You know? For when I go into a house or into a situation or anything, even if I'm watching them at my house, they have to sit and relax. They have to not, not be jumping all over the place. They have to sit and relax before I even go to put the food down. And I won't put the food on the floor unless their butt is still on the floor. Yeah. And even if when I let go of the food, their butt still has to be on the floor yeah. until I say it's okay. Yeah. And then they can have all, eat it as fast as they want. I don't care. <laughs> That's my dog. But that means my hand is safe. Yep. And all the other, I feed everybody separately just to avoid any kind of aggression behavior. Oh, and I've got a lot of rooms that I can separate them in oh, if I need to. So, yeah. That's really and a lot gross. of baby gates. I have a lot of those. Yeah, we, if you notice that we technically have two baby gates, mm-hmm. but then we have temporarily baby yeah. gates where they're just literally blocks of wood just protecting or blocking a certain door and stuff. Um, Let me see what Ustream has any questions so far because I see y'all topping. Typing, tech man, no dog still should not be in cars because of stupid passerbys. Uh, tech man, um, Maxell, does Foxy pose more with clothes or without clothes? Usually without. I do more, even with the photo shoots that I still do occasionally, most of them are figures, figure news. Yeah. Although, or occasionally they'll be clothed and unclothed, you know, do everything in the photo shoot. So it'll kind of back. Go oh, sorry, keep going. I was just gonna say with, with the the classes that I model for, which is most of the models that I do, it's still mostly nude. Although I have been doing with you guys' friend Andy, who yeah. does a fashion class, so I've been doing clothes stuff for that. So with um to kind of go back into the the whole modeling aspect and kind of sh- mm-hmm. you know shy away from the dogs real fast. <laughs> um, but with modeling, uh, sorry, I love it like that again. With modeling. I want to kind of hear a story that, you know, in a sense that was basically your your first time shooting nude. Was there any, like, were you very timid at first with the idea? Like, no, what? No. <laughs> you just literally got to the shoot and you're like, hey, let's do it right now. Well, it was that, that same, you know, hobbyist beginner guy mm-hmm. who didn't have a lot of skills. He would just click the camera and yeah. whatever happened, happened. And it was, again, where I could do whatever I wanted at my own leisure, at my comfort. And I didn't have a lot of fancy clothes to model, so I brought, you know, a couple of, you know, tank tops and shorts or whatever. And again, it was summertime. It was like July and August. Uh, even that very first day, I had a bikini top on. So at some point, I had just taken off my, my tank top and was modeling with the jeans and the bikini top. I even had some old crazy lady make some comment about him taking pictures of me that way, but whatever. Again. Wait, this was outside? Yeah. This was oh, outside. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, um, okay, okay. Just walking around in downtown Royal Oak and taking pictures, like, in the, the storefronts and whatnot. Just in the doorways or whatever, or the little, like, landscaping that was going on, or just, like, benches. There was train tracks. There was all kinds of stuff to, to do modeling against. And that was my very first experience besides the senior portraits. But, again, that was all at my own comfort level. It, he wasn't telling me to do anything. Yeah, yeah, he might suggest try that doorway, but I was the one that was like, I'm going to take my shirt off and use my bikini top now. And he didn't say no, obviously. So, And that's kind of what just started to mm-hmm. the ball rolling with nude photo shoots and stuff. So, Because then after that, we would shoot at his house occasionally. Mm-hmm. And every couple weeks or a couple months, he would contact me. Oh, so you me. worked with him for yeah, a couple quite times. A, yeah, quite, quite so a So it wasn't time. like that very first day we shot nudes. Yeah. It, it took a couple of different photo shoots, I think. My first time was doing nudes in his backyard because he had a, a privacy fenced backyard and he had like, this big tree and he gave me some fairy wings and I went and I posed with the tree 
and I was a, a naked fairy, you know. So, it really wasn't a big, huge, and it wasn't even a real sexual thing at all. Yeah, either. no, it was more, if anything, creative as far as just trying to throw in a concept oh. and, you know, not just have, oh, let's have a pretty girl <laughs> naked in front of a tree. Like, yeah. so no, it was, was still a very creative, creative thing. It, yeah, it wasn't sexualized no. unless I was doing it. Of course. It was all whatever I wanted to do. It was, here's what you can do and just have fun. And I got to do whatever I wanted. So with nudes, because um, with my history with it, I personally am the opposite. I've had other models similar to you. They were, you know, two years old, running around naked, all this other stuff. I'm the opposite. I actually love clothes. I love just being wrapped in it. It just feels like a protective shell, if anything. So when I shoot nudes, it's like almost a new Shima persona. Like, it's just a whole different person. But I personally prefer not to shoot nudes in public, in a sense, like, outdoors. And, and, and if, if I know it's, like, in a super forest, like, yeah. nobody's going to fucking ran, randomly, like, trail in. But if it's, like, out in the middle of, you know, Detroit City, I get really paranoid to, you know, shoot mm-hmm. outside. Do you share that similar idea, or are you more still comfortable? Like, ah, whatever, everyone has this body, in a sense. Mm-hmm. Well, they're, they're, especially when it's in a more public scenario... There's usually a lot of extra people involved that will just be lookouts mm-hmm. in case anybody does start to walk by and then they yeah. can warn you. So you can and you usually have something that's easy to throw back on. Like yeah, sure. a lot of times for the the modeling classes, I just have like a little summer dress that I it's literally just elastic, so I can just throw it up, and throw it back down. So it's, it's a very or again a robe, so you just throw it on and you're not naked anymore. Yeah. So. But I've, I've done some that were, like, on a playground. That, obviously, there was no kids there at the time, but <laughs> there was one person that I walked by with their dog at one time, and I just, you know, again, someone had to be able to alert us and just threw my dress back on or my robe or whatever. See, so you mentioned that there was somebody there to alert y'all. So mm-hmm. is it more just the photographer having assistance, or did you bring an escort, escort to the shoot? A little both. Little some, both? Sometimes it's a couple of his friends, a couple of my friends. Or whatever, whoever wants to be involved can can join us for the shoot. And it's always, you know, we ask them if they want to, if they're free, whatever. And it's never been like a, a paid thing or something. Yeah. But it's always been just someone that can join. And especially in the more public area it is, the more people you need to be watching. Oh, yeah. To course. make sure that people don't wander in. Oh, yeah. I've had that a couple of times where n- nothing serious has ended up happening, but like there was a photographer in New York that ended up I ended up working with but they constantly we went to like a skate park area and there were like not kids but like older yeah teens or whatever yeah and they would just roll around in their skateboard and I was just very like I'm just I can't and we didn't have like I rarely actually have any other additional people with us Mm -hmm. in my photo shoots so it would just be up to me to kind of model and look around real fast to make sure everything was safe and sound so there's that's kind of why I've Definitely said, eh, outside nudity yeah, is just not my is. personal thing. I, th- I think the the most I've, I've kind of public thing like that where having somebody walk through mm-hmm. was actually, it wasn't a little forest area, it was in a metro park, and it was, we were in the stream, in the river. And I was the one that was naked in the water and, like, hanging on the branches and stuff and posing and whatnot, and that was fine. And then around the bend, there's, uh, like, two kayakers came by, so... Yeah, it's some guy and his son or something, mm-hmm. probably. And they didn't really say anything, but I also, I just jumped back in the water, so... You no big deal. Yeah, you can't Even anything. faster than a rope. So. <laughs> so you and then they just gave us goofy looks and kept going, Yeah, Because so. yeah. that's usually what the case sometimes is usually if somebody does and onlookers happens to catch you, they realistically ever really cause any issues. Not really. But I, you know, how you mentioned that an old lady from your the shooting around Royal Oak mm-hmm. decided to make a comment about what you were doing, and you weren't even nude, right? You were no. like you had clothes on mm-hmm. covering, you know, the. the that was even parts. funnier because she only said something because we wouldn't buy one of her flowers. Oh really? So, yeah. That is fucking <laughs> hilarious. It was. Oh, At first, so he was funny. talking to the guy saying if he wanted to buy a flower for his girlfriend or whatever. Which yeah. Clearly I wasn't. Yeah. But whenever we both declined, that's when she made some kind of sarcastic comment about, you know, taking photos of me. See, and that's funny, because it reminds me of a story of what back when, I feel like every time we talk, I feel like I'm, if I'm talking too much, let me know, Foxy, because I, it reminds me of a time when I was in Miami doing a photo shoot on South Beach, and mm-hmm. I was on, like, on the actual beach self, self, and... We weren't shooting nudes. I had blue jeans and, like, a black lace bra on. So nothing uh-huh. was technically showing. 
But then the right before the photographer actually asked if I was comfortable with taking the top off and doing like implied stuff, I noticed that there was an older lady kind of like running up and down like the shore and yeah. she randomly comes up to us and she says, hey sweetie, I just want to let y'all know like, you know, you look so gorgeous and I'm like, oh my god, that's so sweet. Like it's very rare that somebody randomly will come up to you and give you a compliment and then she decides, but you know what, you need to just be doing something better with your life right now and I'm like, whoa, you come at me with a compliment and then you just swipe that right under my feet and fucking like bash me in the head. I'm like, that Whoa. is the wrong way to do a compliment sandwich. Right, exactly. <laughs> and so she just keeps telling me that I'm doing something wrong and I need to be doing something better with my life. And, like, she's not even bashing the photographer at all. I'm not saying it's, like, anything of his fault. But I'm just sitting there, I'm like, ma'am, you don't know shit about me, so I don't know why you're even up, up here to talk. But realistically, yeah. you're in the worst fucking city to be talking anyways. Because we're <laughs> fucking South Beach, Miami. There's fucking a porno happening right behind you. So I don't know <laughs> why the fuck you're coming to me completely oh, semi-dressed. I don't understand. Because she can't walk up to the porno right? and tell them that. So. <laughs> exactly. So, like, I was just so, like, flabbergasted that somebody would work up the courage to not only come up to us, but then just start, like, hating without understanding it's insane but realistically you rarely get yeah. people like that so if you actually have somebody it's just like one of those warm <laughs> moments you're like what all right well go fuck off somewhere like i don't need you just your comments. smile and walk away right yeah. exactly so i noticed um now hopefully they don't give you some kind of god pamphlet so. <laughs> yeah oh my god i've been fortunate that i've never had that happen when i was modeling yeah i've happened at other jobs but that didn't matter um so with modeling what is technically the farthest that you've done as far as the genres is like nudity doing shooting nudes and artistic nudes the farthest that you will go if somebody contacts you and looking to do a photo shoot or were you more well, I've, so, I've done some like boudoir type stuff where it's more the sexy lingerie or mm -hmm. i've had some that were implied with the guy i was seeing at the time yeah where it was literally like it was his back and I think she was wearing pants, but I don't remember. It was long <laughs> ago. And it was shot like just above or just below the waistline. Oh, so, so you just barely saw the top of the pants. Oh, so the guy you were seeing was the actual other model. Yeah. Oh, okay, I thought you were saying the, he was a photographer, so he has like no. half his clothes off while shooting you. I'm like, that sounds like a little I bit of a secret. I was modeling with him, <laughs> and then like he would see my face up over his shoulder, yeah. and then it looked like I was clawing his back, and he had. You know, my, my legs were hanging over his arms. Mm -hmm. So you didn't actually see any nudity. Yeah. But it was in black. Uh, yeah, of course. And then that got taken off of Model Mayhem because it was too sexual. Which made no sense to me whatsoever. What? And again, he still has pants on. So, I don't know. But that's... Like, I've done some, some you know, implied stuff like that. Not a big deal. But yeah. they still... I don't know. I don't... A bad boss put on Facebook and it would be fine because it doesn't show any butts or boobs or anything. Yeah. So. But too sexual for my I am. That's so fucking weird. You might it as well is. take that as a compliment, because that's like, man, you just, like, broke the internet on this with that <laughs> statement. Jesus, what? Okay, All right. even that was, like, almost ten years ago that I did that particular shot, and that's... So, again, it's always been at my comfort level, which is nice. Yeah. All the photographers I've worked with have been very nice about that, and letting me be comfortable with whatever we're shooting. That's good. Even if they give an idea and I can turn it down, they're yes. not, like, pissed off at me or anything, so... So have you gotten the, you haven't, like, have you gotten photographers where you technically maybe not have met them, but they've been just total assholes oh, to yeah. you? Oh, yeah. Plenty of those. Why would they have been, like, did they start off, like, the message being an asshole, or they just couldn't handle your responses to the ideas that they sh you know, um, shared with you? There was almost always someone starting off trying to get me to do some kind of a porn shoot. Oh, and right. almost always. Yeah. And then when I you know, kindly decline that, and then they keep pressuring it, you know, they keep pushing me to do it. And at, at one point, there was one guy that was saying that obviously it's it's only going to be shown in Europe because you know obviously we can't see European porn. The internet doesn't work that way. But th that it would be completely anonymous. Your boyfriend or husband wouldn't even know you were doing it because they wouldn't be able to recognize you in the the video, which I don't know how that's possible. But on top of that, they said that, you know, unique lower back tattoos are encouraged. At which point, how are you not recognizable? Yeah. So when I pointed that out, then the guy just said that, you know, that there was plenty of women he could find that would do it for no money at all. Or to just have sex with him and to return. And I'm like, well, that's not me. Don't, so. you, don't you love when photographers mm -hmm. or even in individuals themselves are like that? Like... I've been doing it for a while, and I 
still get those fucktards oh. all the time. And do you think it has to do something with because we shoot nudity? Or, like, if you think that if we shot just completely clothes, fashion stuff, do you think we'd be still getting those type of messages? Well, I've got friends that do just the clothes stuff, and they still get the messages, too. It's just because there's so much, it's so much access to the porn these days. Yeah, there is, for sure. Like, I mean, honestly, see, and that's what I try to tell people um, that are looking into being models. If you're going to try nudes, like, you can totally do it. If you want to do, like, bondage, totally if that's your thing. If you want to do fetishes... Totally do it, but if you really don't want to do porn, don't fucking do porn. I've met so many different models from you can't my go years. Back from that, you, you can't. Know? Like, it's, it's, like I know, like there it's was gonna tarnish on your record for the yeah, rest of your life. Exactly, like, you were in a porn. And there was moments where, when me and Francis lived in Florida, and we financially weren't doing that awesome. Mm-hmm. So when yeah, when a photographer says, "Oh, you get ten thousand dollars from doing this one scene," that fucking sounds awesome, mm-hmm. but no, thank you. Like I'm gonna try my like so if. There are going to be moments where you just want to have the money, but realistically, if that's something you don't want to do, you just got to keep saying no. Like, it, it fucking sucks usually because... It has to do with your own morals and stuff right there, because it's something you have to live with for the rest of your life. Exactly, and it's something that's... And it's, it's interesting, because like you mentioned it, it's something that you're never going to be able to take back from, because it's going to be... Like, your nude photo shoots are all... You know, all of us are all on the internet, but in my mind... Look, I'm f- I'm content with having my nudes on the internet. Like if my son, fifty years down the line, is like, oh, mom, I saw your you know your nude on the photo. Okay, cool. Your mom had a banging body back then. Like, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> but like, it's different when you are actually engaged in porn. If you don't want to be, if you are totally fine with you know shooting porn, that's on you. Mm-hmm. That's cool. You have definitely allowed a lot of people to jack off. No issues about that. But if you don't, you're not interested in it. It's just it's insane because there's been articles, or not even really articles, but other models that say that they just try to get out of being in that realm mm-hmm. of being a part of porn or the porn industry that they just physically can't like they honestly just have to stop modeling because nobody will allow them to just not be technically quote-unquote a porn star and it's insane but after you walk into that world that that's the world you have now yeah it's hard to, there's even a, a netflix documentary about you know when porn start or when when porn ends or something like that i think but i, I haven't have, have watched it but i've seen on you know, screen or whatever that it's exactly talking about when you do porn and then you try to not do it anymore so and it's it, definitely a difficult thing to do. And usually a lot of times, based on my research as far as, in you know, like documentaries, and like, I love following the porn star Asa Akira, that's actually who Akira's named after. Um, weirdly <laughs> enough, people think she's named after the anime, but she's actually named after a porn star. But anyways, but no, um, a lot of times people, especially models that are interested in shooting porn, they think that they can instantly be one of the famous porn stars, but mm-hmm. it actually rarely, rarely, small percentage happens that you will actually be one of the famous porn stars. You have to work up your way through a lot of very sexual videos to hopefully even be considered a famous porn star. Um, but with that being said... Have you noticed with you shooting nudes, just so, you know, as far as social media goes, mm-hmm. do you think that if you didn't, like, it's, it's very interesting that people will see your nudes or my nudes or somebody's nudes and automatically assume you shoot porn? Yeah, of course. Because so many people sexualize nudity. Yeah. Even though, like, I would love to go to a nude beach or a nude resort. Like, that would just be home to me. Yeah. Just because it's normal there. Yeah. And it's not about sex. It's not about, oh my god, I saw a nipple. It's just like... A man's nipple. I saw a man's nipple. <laughs> I still can't get over the, the, the small fad about photoshopping men's nipples onto women so that you could post the pictures. That was the funniest thing that happened for like two days. I don't know. It was what? Hilarious. Yeah, that was, that was a Facebook thing for a minute. It might have been more than Facebook. It might have been like Reddit and some other stuff too, but yeah, they would Facebook men, the Photoshop. Men's nipples what? onto women, so that they couldn't say it was, you know. That is insane. Or it oh was the funniest goodness. thing I've ever heard of. That's literally insane. Um, but yeah, it's it's interesting <laughs> that people will see nude photos of females, usually with females. I mean, males can pose nude too, and I can imagine, you know, some individuals will get like a sexual urge based on that photo. But they see an artistic photo that's supposed to be meant for you know art purposes, like something that you can actually hang on your wall. 
but they'll see that and be like, oh, titties, or ah, oh, butt, or whatever, and it's just insane, and I've talked about this before in different episodes, but it's just, it's weird that that's how certain, the brain technically works for certain individuals. Or how something to be sexualized. Yeah. It doesn't take much. It doesn't take much at all, and it, it's... So I would imagine, you know, you're comfortable with going to, like, nudist resorts and stuff, so you're pretty much... Never done it yet, but I'm Yeah, but you're comfortable with the idea of it, so you're probably most likely desensitized by the nude figure. You see a nude person, and you're like, yeah, okay, like, that's cool that you're nude. I don't really Mm -hmm. pay too much attention to it. Um, But let me see if there's any questions so far. Dwan is apparently still having issues. Dwan probably actually honestly left already, so he apparently was already having issues. Sorry if anyone on Ustream is having audio issues. I honestly do cannot tell you why. It has to be probably on Ustream's website and not on my actual stream that I'm doing. So, sorry if that is the case. Um, Kyle, integrity is hard, lol. There are only, there's only one model I've seen that's done an explicit scene and she seems to be doing alright. Um, hi Derek. Yeah, and so usually if there is a model, because she probably chose to do that route. If she wanted to do an explicit scene, they purposely chose to go that route. And that's perfectly fine. I have no hatred towards those individuals. I personally could not do it myself. I don't have the courage or the facial expressions or anything to actually be able to handle that. And I think Francis would not appreciate that whatsoever. But realistically, if they, you know, a lot of times, a lot of... It, from basically what I've noticed, a lot of individuals in the porn scene, usually there's a split. They either only got into it because of the money or they got into it be- into it because they purposely like actually really love that type of modeling. You never see anyone in the middle of that. You usually no. get the one or the other. And usually the ones that are only in it for the money fucking want to leave. But the ones that are actually passionate about it, they actually want to keep going and like do their best and they'll will always promote it and not shy away from it. If their family finds out about it, oh fucking well, you're just owning me if that's the case. Yeah. Kind of situation that's similar to like doing new talk or yeah, doing doing new modeling cuz I rarely ever technically have gotten paid for doing fashion shoots. Like all the money that comes from modeling realistically come from either glamour and nude photo shoots. Personally, mm-hmm. is that the same similar situation with like the boudoir or especially the, the fetish modeling? Oh, so you do fetish too as well? Because there's a huge market for that. I do have an extreme limit because I'm a nude model. Yeah. So I can't do a lot of the like rope suspension stuff that leaves marks. Yeah. And I can't do like any kind of like whipping or beating or any of that. Oh, I've got some extreme limitations. Yeah. To that, I can but. only imagine now you go to like one of the figure modeling sessions yeah. and you have like a really red cherry ass. Like, <laughs> I can't really hide those with my my line of work. Yeah, so that's just another you pointed that out. Um, with yeah, the, there you go. <laughs> no, I never. No, <laughs> no, I really never realized with because I just actually me and Francis had a guest, Jessa Jordan, and she does um, bondage like you know the roping and everything mm-hmm. like that. Like literally, she only had one shoot here in Detroit, and it was in Canton. And the guy did the whole. Uh, there's fancy terms for the bondage stuff, oh, yeah. but he did the basic one where it's not supposed to be meant for like the ropes to look nice. It was mm-hmm. just more of the girl tied up and you yeah. know in that sense. But hearing her stories about you know the fetish and you know versus just basic nudes and stuff, it's it's a realm I've never taken on. You know personally, mm-hmm. like literally the closest bondage that I ever did in my entire life was back when I lived in Texas, like the first year, two years, and me and my friend. Um, got tied and twine, but like yeah. from the head up in just like constant circles to the point where like we couldn't really move. But it was more the purpose of like us breaking free of it yeah. in a sense. So like that's honestly, and that's the closest bondage I've ever came across. Mm-hmm. After that, like it's just never been my thing to do it again. I don't think I have a good facial expression. Like Jessa was mentioning, like she had to um, at that photo shoot she had to portray like you know the photographer fear yeah the fear and all that other stuff and I'm like I probably would probably really be really good at it because I would probably start crying because I would be really feared that I'm literally tied and could not get out but that's really what they want but yeah it's hard to fake that kind of stuff like it even is the, the couple times I've done the, the fetishy stuff a lot of times they'll request like to video the, the whole kidnapping scene type deal and I'm not an actress, because I will just laugh through the whole thing. So I'm terrible at that part. But I, I can I can fake a, a scared look for a second. You might catch it. But yeah. for the most part, I, I can't take it seriously. So 
So I, I try. I really yeah. do try. But even then, like, those are the kind of things that I have to know the person. I have to know people that know that person. I have to have somebody with me at that shoot. Yeah. Because you so much can go wrong. Mm-hmm. So. And I can only imagine. I mean, again, I've never done it before, but mm-hmm. I can only imagine what it is. I have done it in a long time, mostly because I, I can't do the stuff that they really want to do that leaves marks and stuff. Yeah. Because of my, my figure modeling. At the schools, I can't. You know, especially since most the time they're offering that for free. Yeah. But I, I, I've been told that if I am willing to travel to the other states, that, that they can definitely get me work doing that. But again, I have to worry about marks. Yeah, so. and it's definitely true because there's a lot of models that do fetish work and they travel. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. we, Detroit has the erotic show, and so people come here for that. The same thing, like, back in Austin, where I'm from, they had that type of same similar mm-hmm. show. So you find those in certain areas. Apparently, There's just, actually a lot of shows like that in oh, this yeah. general area. Oh, really? More than just that one oh, that yeah. I'm thinking oh, of yeah. that happens, like, in February or something? Yeah, that's the dirty show. Yeah, yeah that's They right. also have an erotica ball. They've got, or you have to either be in, like, ball type, like, dressy dressy, or you have to be in fetish clothing. And they have, like, it's pretty much the same thing, just about the artwork on the wall. Hmm. I may <laughs> have to look into it, because then, a lot, yeah. a lot of performances and stuff like that. Maybe there's a lot of smaller groups that have, like, fetish parties and play parties, and it's, my, my roommate's into all that. So I get to hear a lot of strange stories when he comes home. See, and that, like, I'm not totally into fetish personally, like, for modeling-wise, but, like, seeing that type of environment would just be interesting to be, like, mm-hmm. around. Like, you have so much, like, these people are just out there, like, in a good way. Like, they're like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to be me and who I really want to be because at work, you know, they have to be conservative, all this other shit. That's a big reason why the, the couple times I do go, I, I go there for the environment, just because the energy is so good. It's, so, yeah. it's such an accepting environment. Oh, yeah. But I was, they're not, like, I'll, I'll get naked usually yeah. because that's my comfort, and then I'll just watch everybody. Yeah, and usually they'll just give you compliments, too, at the same time. They Like, it seems like those places, they give you the <laughs> most compliments in oh, yeah. any other place. Like, there's no negativity anywhere. Yeah. Um, they like your eyebrows, they think your eyebrows on fleek, they're going to tell you they're eyebrows on fleek. <laughs> Um, right on those swap with us. Uh, so y'all that you've been on you stream or let's backtrack stream. All right, all right. So let's pause with us because for those that have been on episodes of Be Cool before, you know that when I have a special guest right next to me, we have a special lovely treat. So we're gonna do this right now. So get in for it because I'm honestly really scared. I'm kind of like borderline scared, but at the same time, like maybe hoping that it's going to taste like something that I'm familiar with. So I personally have not had this, Foxy. I do not know what it is. I showed Francis. You're about to know. I showed Francis, and he said that he feels like you've had it before. Not knowing like Francis actually has known what you've had. But just me showing him. He's like, he has all of my meals. Yeah, and he's like, I feel like she might have had this. Because I didn't go too crazy as much as I could have been. But I'm kind of like... <laughs> I'm hoping it's going to taste like something that I'm familiar with. Okay. Alright, guys. You ready? Drum roll, please. Oh my god, I don't have an extra hand. We're going to try Vienna sausage. Have you had it? I have not. Yes! There's going to be one At least not this way. I've had them, like, when they're wrapped up in the bread and... See, okay, is this fine for me to just open this yeah. and eat this? Okay, because so I looked and I'm like, it doesn't say, like, how to cook this, so I'm hoping <laughs> that all I have to do is, um... They're not that bad. They're oh. definitely different, but they're not bad. So you've technically had it, but not straight up. Yeah, not, not straight out of the can like that. All right. We're, we're going to do it. Well, feel good because there's either this or sardines or <laughs> prunes. I didn't okay, know which one was going to be Um, So, yeah, guys, just FYI, show you a fast Vienna sausage. 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 Sausages? All right, so... First, we're going to smell it, and then we're going to um, eat it, of course. <laughs> so, have you had Spam before? I don't know. I'm assuming I have, like, when I was a kid, probably. Yeah. But I did not recently. Well, Spam is one of those things where... Um, not since I can remember eating it. Yeah. Or at least being told what it was. Yeah, and so Spam is one of those things where I've definitely had before, but I can only eat it one way, and it's literally make Spam fried rice. But it has to be, like, fried with soy sauce to get that crisp taste. Yeah. It sounds fucking gross, but I swear to God, it's, like, delicious. Like, I will honestly eat the Spam by itself with mm-hmm. the soy sauce, you know, fried. But any other way, like, I remember my brother would, like, cut up a slice of Spam and, like, and fry it real it. fast. Okay. And then eat it real fast. He, he fried it, though. But the funny thing, actually, is uh, there's been moments where I leave Francis to go on a trip. And he's not, no offense, Francis, but he's not the most <laughs> uh, glorious chef. Mm-hmm. As the nicest terms we can say. So there was a moment where he had to come up with a, a meal for himself and he saw a can of Spam 
and decided to cook it. So mm -hmm. he told me this. And I'm like, oh, well, how did you cook it? Did you put some soy sauce and fry it up? And he's like, no, I just put it in the microwave and ate it. <laughs> oh, jeez. I was literally uh, gagged in my mouth hearing that. I'm like, Francis, that sounds horrible. I don't understand how. Okay, well, let's just. Mm. All right. I'm kind of nervous because these do not look appetizing. Oh. Ah! Oh, really? I literally just spilled Vienna sausage guts all over my computer. <laughs> oh, no. I don't have anything to clean it up with. That was horrible. <laughs> Fox is like, yeah, this is what life with Shima is all about right now. Just dropping oh. shit. Literally, my computer is going to smell like Vienna sausage now, and it literally went inside the keyboard. I'm going to have to take that to, like, Mac or something. Apple, oh, figure this out. Oh, man. Vienna sausages are dangerous. Yeah, right? Now my computer is going to smell like that. That's glorious. <laughs> awesome. Well, <laughs> something I have to figure out tomorrow. Anyways, so hopefully they... Hopefully this will work, because now that I just fucked up my computer, hopefully. Alright, well I tried to show y'all what it looked like, but that's not happening. So feel free to grab a slice. Um, a roll. Jeez. I don't know if I can get one out. See, I don't know actually how to... <laughs> I don't know the easiest way to get that out. Ah, oh, there's the weenies. I got the magic. I know. And we have strawberries just in case. There you go. All right, hold on. Wait for me. I'm just going to make sure this doesn't fuck, fuck this computer up. All right, that technically kind of not works. Whatever, we'll figure it out. Hopefully, I did not fuck up this computer. Oh, man. Ew. There we go. We got Vienna sausages. Man. <laughs> All right, Foxy. You ready? Cheers. Cheers to Vienna sausages. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm scared. This doesn't smell good. Um, they're not bad, though. They're not terrible. I've actually had, like, just plain hot dogs not cooked, and they were worse. I've never had that, because I've always been too scared to do that. I don't do it on a regular basis, but there's been, you know, camping experiences. I personally think they're not that <laughs> bad. They're not the worst thing I've tasted in the world, but that's pretty much how it goes with canned meat. It, <laughs> yeah, it literally just tastes like canned meat, and that's literally um, the case. Do you want a strawberry candy? I'll take one. Oh, okay. that. After I'm done with my weenie here. You will eat the whole weenie. She will eat the whole weenie. <laughs> So does, does this mean that you'll eat, like, you'll go and buy Vienna sausage now? Or is this uh, just a one time, I'm not going to waste food? Pretty much. I'm doing it for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you said Vienna sausages are, like, the equivalent of meh. Um, and then on new stream, sorry, I'm not worrying about my computer, so hopefully my computer's not fucked. Um, <laughs> so let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um... No people asking about a website. Alejandro, does Sarah have a website? Do you have a I website? I do have a website. Well, I have a Facebook page right now. Because I actually did a lot of, tried to do a lot of stalking, stalking of you, and you're a very hard, tough cookie to, you know, find golden treats about, so Facebook was the only thing I had to rely I'm on. I'm right here. I'm on. Do do do. Foxy Tigress model as a public figure. Whoa, where'd that come from? <laughs> I'm like pushing buttons just to make sure my computer works, but some new yeah, thing one. popped up. I give it to you guys too, even though it's reversed. So you're gonna have to unreverse it because it's the camera. But it's Foxy Tigress, uh, semicolon, colon. I don't remember what that is anymore. And then model. But you can just do a search for Foxy Tigress. I'm sure it'll come up. Um, last few questions for anyone that has for Foxy. Um, let's see, Maxel. For Foxy, does the fetish pose in latex suits or nude fetish? Um, I've done both. I, I've done latex type stuff, not like a full latex suit, just because I don't own one. But, <laughs> but I've done like, you know, a little latex mini skirt or latex bras, latex corset type situations. Yeah, so I've, I've done a lot, that's actually why I got into it, just because I like the clothing myself. One of the few types of clothing I can handle being in and not hate it, so. Because leather just ends up smelling bad. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can only imagine. Oh, my God, I can only imagine. Yeah, so no leather, but, like, vinyl pants. I love vinyl pants, but they're hard to find, and they don't last a whole long time. 
So, because it's just the material that they are. So, now my fingers smell like fucking sausages. Um, so uh, sniff the strawberries. I know, I know, I'm like trying to like <laughs> breathe out my mouth. Um, so, when you said that, you know, you don't have a full body latex, you know, suit. It's called a cat suit, one that goes from your neck to your feet. Oh, oh cat suit. I learned that. I've heard of it, but I mm-hmm. guess now I'm putting it actual into terms. So, does that mean that you usually provide the wardrobe a lot of times? Most of the times. And then I, I, I had, I used to have my own, like, just fuzzy handcuffs. Not handcuffs, but they were actually suspension cuffs. They were meant for suspensions, but they were the most comfortable things. Because it was just leather with fur lining, and then it was just a buckle. So it wasn't, like, a lock or anything crazy like that. They were, they were suspension cuffs, or they've got ones that are just, you know, handcuff type deals. But they're not metal, they're, they, they strap, so that you can always undo them. And it's, it's just a lot more comfortable. They don't leave marks like handcuffs do. Yeah. So I personally, and I, even in high school, I used to wear like leather collars and spikes and all that crazy stuff just because I personally liked the accessories. Yeah. And I used to actually wear like a dog leash as a belt and I would attach it to my collar and it was my yeah. times. That's dope. I've never thought of that type. That I was, that was and then you dog. unleash it and then you just go walk the dogs yeah. that you had set up for the day. Especially when it was just like a, a chain leash anyway, because then I could loop it through its own handle yeah. and then put it on my, my collar co- um, ring. There we go. Collar ring, and I would walk around high school like that, and people didn't bother me too much. It was pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you find that fascinating based on what you wear during grade school, or even nowadays too, that there's just based on what you're wearing, is mm-hmm. what people either come to you or get, come away from you. Like, It's very interesting that's just because of what you like and... And it was actually a, my my scene. I took. I went to a, a career center for the last two years of, of high school for agricultural science, and it was the I, I wore again the, these collars and everything. All the first year that I was at this career center, no problems. The day I walk in there for the first day of class for the second year, one of the hall monitors tried to stop me, saying that it was a dangerous weapon. So I had spikes on my collar. And I, I literally laughed at her and, you know, I talk, talked for a minute and then I just kept going because I'm like, you can't even wear stilettos anymore because those are dangerous because you can gouge somebody's eye out with them. I'm like, unless I'm thrusting my neck at you, it's not really that dangerous. I mean, realistically, then we can't eat with forks because I could just jab your eye out with a fucking fork. That's interesting. Oh, yeah. they try to be safe, but then realistically... I just said it kept people from strangling my neck, so, you know... <laughs> That was my excuse. Fucking perfect, yeah. honestly. Oh my god, I'm gonna. Well, there's never gonna be a moment when that happens to me. But if that ever happens to me, I'm gonna use that line yep. exactly. Oh, um, on Periscope they asked, "Is latex gear expensive?" Yes, it is. It's very expensive, which is why I don't own a cat suit. Is it just you think because of the material? Uh, it's mostly because it's just anything fetish oriented tends to skyrocket mm. the price, just because it's the whole community, the fetish community, and. Even just like massage oils are way more expensive than like baby oil or olive oil, which can be used too, but they want the pretty smelling, fetish, warming, whatever oils to do massages with. That's insane. So they're just using you based on that. Especially because they have KY now has massage oils and yeah, it's just, just all sexually based now. Um, Kyle, I love those. I haven't had them in years, but I enjoyed it. That was you, a reference to the reference to the video. Yeah, so. I know. I was about to say, uh, you are more than welcome to come back over <laughs> here and take this bowl full of Vienna sausages and eat them because I literally have not made them. Like, what, usually <laughs> in um, all my shows, I we have we eat something weird that I feel like no no you know me and the special guests have never mm-hmm. tried before. So like there was Vegemite one episode. There was like this pickled plums another episode. There was like this. Swedish candy that another episode. Oh, so literally, my pantry is filled with fucking <laughs> weird shit that has only been opened once and is not oh, being opened man. again. So it's like now, well, fortunately, we just dumped, dumped out the whole Vienna sausages, so I just have to oh. throw that away. But my entire pantry is filled with random fucking <laughs> stuff. Um, That's a good time, though. Yeah, I know, right? Now I get to, every time I see the Swedish candies, I'll be like, oh, that fucking time. Have you had them before? Or you probably haven't. Which um, Swedish fish or something No, else? no, 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 no. I'm okay, going to get... I'm going to let you try it before you leave. Um, oh, boy. Because it's... Unrecorded? <laughs> unrecorded. Because they, they've already experienced mm-hmm. us doing do it. Yeah. <laughs> Akira will have a mega farts after she eats the Vienna <laughs> yeah, sausages, well. so I don't think that's going to be a good plan for us in the bed right now. Ah, uh, the dog might... Yeah, the dog might like the sausages. She can totally... 
technically have them, but I'm not going to risk that. <laughs> All right. Um, you should have Sir Stroming on the next episode. I imagine that's some weird delicacy because you have the... I'm guessing it's German. Yeah, because you have the dots <laughs> on top of the O. So I'm going to give that a look, Alejandro. You should definitely... I don't have a pen near me, so I'm going to have to just try to remember that. Um, all right, guys. Well, Sarah, I.K. Foxy, I'm going to switch from both every second. Oh, that's fine. But is there anything else that you want to share? Or since technically you already gave your Facebook, but is there any other social media you just want to post mm. out there in the world? Oh, I got that one. That's pretty much the only one that's really important because I'm always on there. and We have links from the Facebook to everything else all the time. And there's... There, there's uh, selfies that we post on there. I do, I mean, p photos from the past 10 years of photo shoots. So it gets a little bit of everything. And it's a good time. Actually, now I bring this up real fast. Last question for me. <laughs> what caused you to not get into the whole social media realm? Because as far as having special guests here, the best social media platform for me to get stopped is Twitter. Twitter's like mm -hmm. the best for me to figure somebody out. But you realistically just have a Facebook. Pretty much, because uh, I'm simple. I don't know how to do the other ones. You should definitely at least try Tumblr, <laughs> if anything. Maybe Tumblr might be your, your outlet, if anything. But we're looking into, or actually looking into doing a, a pay site soon. Mm -hmm. So they can actually post the nudes and have them purchasable as sets. That would be awesome. And that's like, in, in the very, very near future, it was supposed to have happened uh, on Friday, but it didn't. That's what I've been talking about with my website. I've said my mm. website's going to come soon, and it just still has a game yet. So we're working on, on that's the immediate project. And after that, I'll probably work more on... I have a friend who works with me on my, my Facebook page because he, he knows more what to do, what yeah how to, how, how to run it better yeah. than I do. I, I can do the modeling stuff. I don't know how to run the, the websites, but I'm learning. And we're, we're working on that. So, um, but yeah, we're working on... The, the pay site is the immediate project, and then after that, we're going to work more on the, the Tumblr, the Twitter, yeah, and stuff like that. Oh, man. See, I need, I need, to, I need to hire somebody just to do that for me. <laughs> I get tired. Because we're, we're tired of censoring the photos on Facebook. And yeah, that's the bullshit part of it. Especially where we do the hashtag free the nipple, and it's great. Yeah. It's a good time. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good time. We'll see how long that lasts doing the hashtag free the nipple until they finally Maybe go, fuck it, fine. Let's give the nipple all its glory that it needs to be. Well, Foxy, a.k.a. Sarah, mm -hmm. a.k.a. whatever else, I really honestly appreciate it. Ooh, yeah, did it again. Um, <laughs> I realistically appreciate you spending mm -hmm. time with me and the fellow viewers mm -hmm. for Be Cool. Um, everyone, definitely give Foxy a follow on Facebook for sure. Otherwise, next week, it'll just be me, so just get to handle me. <laughs> I will not spill Vianna sausages all up on my fucking computer. I'm literally worried about this right now. But, all right, guys, everyone on Periscope, thanks for tuning in, and see you next week. Bye. <laughs> and then everyone on Ustream, seriously, appreciate mm -hmm. it. I know y'all had some audio issues. I don't really know, so hopefully next week mm -hmm. will not be the case. But, all right, guys, toodles, and have a great rest of the week. Bye.